So my question to you, David, <laughs> is what if you should reach that higher state, then what? <laughs> then what happens? <laughs> well, let's that's an excellent question. And, and this is really uh, synonymous with asking what is the purpose of the chakras? If, if we say, if we say what is the purpose of uh, um, Negong? What's the purpose of inner alchemy? What is the purpose of mm -hmm. um, Kundalini yoga? What is the purpose of any of these practices? It's synonymous with asking what is enlightenment? What is the highest goal that people were working to attain? Mm -hmm. Now, this is defined differently in all these different lineages, you see. So we find in, in Taoism, the definition, uh, one definition I've heard is to transform qi into shen, into spirit, mm -hmm. and spirit into um, to transform the jing, I'm sorry, to transform the essence of the lower dantian into the qi of the heart center, and then transform the qi into the shen, which then enters the Tao. And so it's the same thing where, where the chakras also could be said to be like a metaphorical journey away from earth, away from incarnation, away from bondage, away from emotions, away from... Uh, the world of dust, as the Taoists say, toward the world of spirit. And I think that's the shared commonality. But if we look at the goal that you were just stating here, what is the goal? You know, what happens? Well, I think there are an unbelievable and intriguing number of definitions of what the goal is, of what enlightenment is. And I think there is probably a lot of shared commonality to it in different traditions and probably a countless variety of individual variations to it. But I think we could say, probably just, you know, from common sense, that it probably is an alteration of our consciousness. Right. And I, I feel that, um, you know, if we have our basic needs met, which is that kind of lower Dantian support, uh, and we can evolve past the emotional attachments that we have for things or even people, uh, wealth or, you know, whatever it is that that attachment uh, pulls at us, then we can start to look at uh, and consider, you know, this higher evolution. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy for the majority I would say, I, I can say for myself that it's not easy because there are so many distractions um, in a day, especially with the speed of what is happening around us. Um, and if we set our goals and maybe we don't meet that goal, and so you have to reset your next goal. And so maybe that's where intention plays a role, that when we have intention, there's a famous expression in Qigong, yi dao qi dao, which means the yi or the mind. Uh, where that goes, the qi or the energy follows. So if you place your focus on something and your mind goes there, then the blood will go there, the energy will go there. And so it's very simplistic in a, a sense if you look at it that way but it can be very profound. And so I, I wondered about, you know, in your experience with meditation or other practices, um, if yi dao chi dao, where the mind goes, the, the energy follows or flows, then, you know, where, if you keep setting these intentions, can you get blocked from setting intention? You know, is there, uh, is it a trap? <laughs> or do we then have to pay, my feeling is that we need to pay attention after we set at uh, intention. So there's a dance between the two of intention and attention in order for us to 
merge into that Tao? Do you know, do you, do you understand my, my, uh, my flow with that? Is that so often uh, we get stuck in, in the form of a practice and we can't let go because that feels safe. And because we're human beings in an encapsulated form, it sort of makes sense. And yet here we are trying to transcend beyond the, the, the uh, limitations of the body, let's say. So where do we go from that place of, if we're evolving, what does that mean? How do we uh, become better human beings? You know, is, is an oppressor worse than the oppressed? Or is there a karmic energetic that brings them together and we can't change that, that destiny? So these are just kind of the ponderings that I would have about these different states of being or different states of consciousness. I wondered what you might have to say about that. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful ponderings, but I, I think I'm going to turn them back into questions for you also. Uh, <laughs> First, uh, I have used and shared that term, yi dao, qi dao, countless times since you taught me that. <laughs> Thank you. That's a, a fundamental uh, principle. Now, yi dao, qi dao is the basis of doing any kind of uh, work with the chakras or any kind of work with the dantian. And the idea is that in order to do any kind of uh, internal alchemical transformation, working with the chakras, whether it's, you know, raising energy in the central channel and activating Kundalini or uh, activating, you know, Tumo fire or to melt the nectar out of the brain or whatever the practices were, they're all based on the power of concentration and they're all based on directing the attention uh, to the inside of the body. That's what is very profound about all of these traditions is that they're all based on a radical evolution, a radical new view of spirituality that came out of that period of time about 2000 years ago mm. that came out all over asia in these different in these different traditions and that radical view was that enlightenment is based in the body mm. okay. it was not the view of the you know the religions that you know if you're good you're going to go to heaven okay <laughs> It's right. enlightenment is a biological component to who we are. How do we cultivate it? And the key is yi dao, qi dao. We focus over and over internally and discover it and cultivate it and direct it. And therefore, we have all of these different practices of circulating the energy in different ways. That's the commonality of all the chakra practices is that they are using it, using them as focal points for the yi, for the attention to activate the chi. And so now let me ask you, since this is a fundamental aspect of what you teach, and that is what do you tell your students about yi dao, qi dao, while they are doing uh, the different sets, the different movements. And oh, what, does that, what does that feel like? And what are the signs of attainment? Okay, because I think that we could go back to your earlier question and I could ask you that and say, what is the attainment of yi dao, qi dao? Oh, very good question, David. Um, for me, and especially when I see so much activity going around, distractions all around, um, that the attainment of peace 
is one of the priorities. To access that, you need to slow down. And, you know, not everyone can sit and in quiet without distraction. They can sit and watch television, but they can't sit perhaps and go inwards rather than outwards. And so that's where Qigong comes in. Because of the slowness of the movements, synchronized with this slow, gentle, smooth, even breath, there is something in that uh, spaciousness that's created from slowing down and giving yourself permission to go inwards rather than outside referencing all the time that slows us down enough to feel the pauses to then access the peace. And so it's a combination of that type of slow, smooth, gentle breathing and movement, that synchronization that sets up a new rhythm in the body and brain and heart. So the, what you call the chakras and we call the dantians starts to come into alignment. It's, in a sense, it's a vertical alignment, even as energies circulate in different directions. Um, and when you can bring peace to the body, everything else settles, the emotions settle, the perspective is broader, even though you're going inwards. And you have, a, you have a way to journey through the chaos. Uh, my t- one of my teachers, Master Duan Zhiliang, who lived until 107, he said, the mind can marry with the heart and access any dantian at will. And so that's why the, where the mind goes, the chi follows, because If you are in this concentrated yet open mode uh, with this gentle focus, there is this transmutation that already begins to happen in the body. And so we have to start with the body because we're born into, the spirit is born into a body. And so once it has a certain type of realization of what this universe of the human being is about and the then it can go back into the cosmic understanding this higher understanding that in fact we are interrelational beings we are in this together you know so that's how i understand it david in terms of um you know how how this works in the qigong world and in the according to Taoism, which is a more natural philosophy. Uh, so I'd be, I'd be curious about how you interpret that with the chakras and the illuminated self, how to be illuminated. <laughs>